Courtney Herr, um, Webster's Dictionary defines senile as exhibiting a decline of cognitive ability, such as memory associated with old age. Mr. Herr, based on your report, did you find that the president was senile? I did not. That, that conclusion does not appear in my report, Congressman. Special counsel Robert Herr grilled by both uh, Republicans and uh, Democrats over his investigation into President Biden's, Biden's handling of classified documents. It was a marathon session in front of the House Judiciary Committee. Herr facing sharp questions from both sides over his decision not to pursue criminal charges against President Biden and over his decision to include comments about Biden's age and memory in that final report. With us now is Glenn Ivey, Democrat representative of Maryland. Thank you so much for your time, Congressman. Both parties accusing her Thanks, of being partisan in this uh, situation. Republicans claiming a double standard with Trump being charged for his mishandling of classified documents while Biden was not. And Democrats saying the report was used to smear President Biden playing up that Republican narrative of him being senile. What's your takeaway from the hearing? Well, I think the Republicans on the panel certainly engaged in a smear campaign yesterday. The, the, the question you just played about senility, there was another one about uh, the need for an appointed guardian or something along those lines were just absolutely ridiculous and irresponsible. Uh, as for the other issues, I, you know, I thought uh, Hurt made fair points with respect to the comparison between Biden and why he wasn't charged and Trump and why he was in the particular cases, you know, Trump hid documents, told people to hide documents, tried to suppress evidence, told people to lie about it. All of those sorts of things that Herb pointed out, I thought made good sense. And as for the double standard, the, this Department of Justice under Merrick Garland uh, cleared Vice President Pence for similar charges and has brought charges against Democrats uh, like the, the Senator from New Jersey in their investigation. So I, I think those are hollow claims that are frankly desperate you know, this was supposed to be something where they, you know, raised the uh, the the issue about whether Biden could be president. You know, it was just up to the task. But I think the State of the Union speech blew that out of the out of the water. So they had to resort to the, these kinds of tactics. Mm. One of the moments that struck me yesterday was when one of the committee members asked former special prosecutor her to read the part of his report that was critical of Donald Trump, that laid out some of the very things that you just laid out, the major differences in the case, which is primarily that Trump refused to give some documents back and then obstructed efforts, allegedly, to give the material back to the, to the feds. And the committee member asked Mr. Hur himself, could you read the report? And he started to, and then said, you know, you, you, can, you can read it. And, and, and as it was almost a moment where he didn't really want to read it himself, his own words in the public report that he himself submitted. Um, and I, I thought that was that was telling. What that was my read on my couch, though. What was what was your read as a member of uh, of Congress about his reluctance in that moment to read his own report? Yeah, that was interesting. But I, you know, he did go ahead and read those those passages, and he acknowledged. Uh, when that was Congresswoman Dean that asked those questions, um, that that was his still his position today, and that he stood by that that aspect of the report and the report in, in its entirety. So, uh, you know, look, I, you know, I think he wrote some things that um, I don't know that I think he was personally biased or you know trying to get a, a position with the Trump administration, as some suggested yesterday. I, I think if, if that had been the case, he would have gone ahead and, and and you know moved to indict President Biden, which is. I'm sure what President Trump wanted. But, you know, I think he was naive, as, as Congressman Schiff suggested, in thinking that some of the things that he wrote wouldn't turn into, you know, explosive comments that would be misused, I think, in the public dialogue. And the Republicans, as we saw yesterday, uh, had no shame in doing just that. So to be clear, you don't think there were any political motivations whatsoever with her being a Republican? Well, I don't know if I would say it, you know, quite that broadly, but, you know, it, it, I thought it was funny that the Republicans would say that a guy who spent his entire career working for the Republican Party, you know, a clerk for uh, Chief Justice Rehnquist appointed to the Department of Justice by Donald Trump um, somehow then was going to be, I think one of them called him a Praetorian guard for uh, Merrick Garland and the Biden administration. I just, it, it just doesn't stand the, the straight face test. 
And listen, we all know in recent months that this whole idea of classified documents being mishandled uh, has been in the news. Obviously, Trump is still facing that case in Florida. No trial date just yet. There are, there are some important hearings uh, this week. We had Biden do something similar. We had Pence do something uh, uh, similar. And I'm sure it's happened probably more times in the country uh, realizes for one reason or, or, or another. Um, is it time, though, <laughs> I don't know quite how these matters are enforced there on Capitol Hill, but what can we do as a country, regardless of our politics and who the president is, to make sure that the nation's secrets aren't in a garage, in an office in Delaware, or in a bathroom in Mar-a-Lago? I mean, I'll say it this way. When I left um, one of my large law firms that I worked for about 10, 12 years ago, they sent somebody down to go through the documents with me and help guide me through the process so that I would leave documents that belong to the clients that were going to stay with the firm and take documents that should go with me. Um, it seems to me that the federal government, certainly for presidents, vice presidents, uh, you know, ought to be doing the same so that you don't have staffers, which is what happened here with, with uh, President Biden. And I think it goes all the way back to President Reagan. You know, you really ought to have professional people who do this for a living, probably out of the archives group, uh, that come in and just take control of this sort of process so we don't have these kinds of issues again. Mm. Glenn Ivey, Democratic Representative of Maryland, thank you so much for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Alex. All right, thank